Hey, as you can see, I'm back at the most beautiful tennis venue in the world. I'm here in Monaco for the Monte Carlo Masters and I've got the opportunity to get onto this practice court to hit some balls with the new Technifiber racket. Now, just like my last couple of reviews, I'm trying to make all of my racket reviews unique. And so, although I've not got data to accompany this racket review, I'm going to be hitting with former ATP number 202, Laurent Rochette. And so, not only are you going to get the lowdown on this new racket and how it feels to me, you're also going to see me run ragged. So, in this playtest, I'm reviewing Technifiber's TFX1 version 2. This racket is endorsed by Corentin Moutet and it is the power racket in the Technifiber lineup. I actually have the version one back at home and spoke about it a little bit in my Technifiber lineup review last year, which you can find the link to in the description below. But in this new yeah, racket, bro. as well as updated cosmetics, Technifiber have upgraded the X damp system, which I'll talk about more in a second. As well as this, because the TFX1 has proven popular with Technifiber, they've introduced two more rackets in the lineup. There's now six, ranging from the lightest being 255 grams up to the heaviest being 305 grams. I tested the heaviest two, the 300 gram and the 305 gram, as the lighter frames are more suited to beginners, juniors, or players that have slower or shorter swings. Now, before going into detail about how the play test went with these two rackets, let's talk briefly about X-Damp. Now, X-Damp is a technology that's been developed in the grip of the racket to help reduce vibrations. Now, Technifiber claim that the new X-Damp system reduces vibrations by 36%, which for this type of racket, being a power racket, is a great thing, as traditionally power rackets with that slightly thicker beam can be quite stiff and unforgiving on the arm. So by adding this extra level of comfort is gonna be a real benefit to this racket. Now to understand why these are classed as power rackets, there are two main things within the specs of the racket that makes a racket powerful. One being the width and the shape of the beam. You'll notice on this racket, it's quite a rounded beam, similar to rackets like the Babolat Pure Drive. And the width and the shape of this beam makes the racket stiffer than other rackets like control rackets. And what a stiff racket gives you is high energy transfer. More flexible rackets with a thinner beam tend to absorb more of the oncoming ball speed, meaning for slightly less power and more control. Now, when testing these two rackets, we had them paired with Technifiber's Razor Soft String, which is a soft poly and complements the racket really well, as that slightly softer string, again, gives for a more forgiving feel. I have both of them strung at 24 kilograms yeah. or 52 pounds. First up, I played with the 305, weighing in at 305 grams unstrung and with a 98 square inch head with a 16 by 19 string pattern. Straight off the bat, it felt really easy to play with. Considering it's a 98 square inch head and I'm used to playing with an 100 square inch head, it still felt pretty forgiving. The open string pattern 16 by 19 still gave you great spin potential and really good power. I did feel at the start that a few of my shots were sailing long just because I'm not used to a power frame. However, once I got used to the trajectory and added a little bit more top spin, this racket felt really, really nice to play with. What I would say is that I think this racket would play even better if it had slightly more weight in it. I felt that when I was hitting the ball slightly off center, it didn't feel quite as stable, probably again because it was that slightly smaller head size to what I'm used to. And also because I was playing on a clay court with those slightly more varied bounces and against Lauren who hits with a lot of topspin. And so I'd be really intrigued to see how this racket would play if it had slightly more weight in it. Okay, so it was just testing the 305 gram version, which was a 98 square inch head. Now I'm going down to the 300 gram version, which has a 100 square inch head. So I'm expecting a bit more power on this. The other one felt surprisingly powerful considering it was only a 98 square inch head. It felt pretty comfortable as well. Um, so yeah, I'd be interested to see how this goes. I might start pinging a few long. Which honestly, I thought would be more difficult for me to control, but I was surprised to feel the opposite. The extra head size and more open string pattern felt really nice to play with even more comfortable and forgiving than the previous racket, which as I mentioned, playing on clay, I really needed that. But compared to the last racket, it surprisingly felt even more stable and just as powerful. My shots felt much cleaner and I was controlling the ball more, possibly because I was using more spin. But just having that bigger head gave me a much bigger sweet spot and made that racket feel even more comfortable. Just like the first one, it did feel like a few of my shots sailed long, but as soon as I remembered to add a little bit more top spin, I really enjoyed that extra power and weight of shot. 
So surprisingly, I actually like this one a lot more. Um, the 100 square inch head is more like what I'm used to, but it's offering more power with the 1619 string pattern, a um, bit more open, and I'm ripping the ball. Maybe it feels like it because I'm play playing on the clay in Monte Carlo, but yeah, I actually feel far more comfortable with this. Bigger sweet spot. And although I was getting a decent amount of power with that 305, the smaller head size didn't quite suit my, my game style. As the rackets were off the shelf, both Laurent and I preferred the 300 gram racket. It was really easy to pick up and play with, but we both agreed that the 305 would benefit from a little bit more weight. After a good hour of hitting, we hit some serves and played a tie break. I'm not gonna show you the footage here as I'm actually putting together a mic up match, which I'll share with you in my next video. But what I would say is both of these rackets perform really well in the match setting. Because I was now fully warm and hitting my forehands and backhands pretty well, I was able to tame that power using extra spin. As I mentioned in last year's Technifiber racket review that I made, my favorite racket in the lineup is the T-Fight 305. As usually, I hit with much flatter swings. That's more suited to my game as it adds that element of control. However, when I was using these TFX1 rackets, I loved the feeling when I was hitting with more spin. And so overall, these rackets are perfect for players looking for easy access to power and spin with the added benefit of comfort. I can honestly say that these were definitely more comfortable than the previous version and so would be fantastic for club level players as I see tons of club level players players wanting those power rackets but not wanting that feel of playing with a stiffer racket. This gives you the best of both. If you're an advanced player, you should try the 300 and the 305 that we used, but try them both out as your game style might be different to mine. But if you're less experienced or require something lighter, then there are four other options for you to choose from. As I just said, you can see me and Laurent playing in a tie break in my next video, so you can see how these rackets perform in a competitive scenario. And if you've got any further questions about these rackets, let me know in the comments below and I'll get back to you. Thanks as always for watching. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care.